Hey, what is going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So in this video, I want to do a quick tutorial on creating an 80s styled intro, and this is a very basic tutorial, but I want to go ahead and you know get into more advanced stuff, but I want to start with a basic tutorial. So here's kind of what we'll be creating, uh, and it's just this very nice clean 80s intro with a few different styles from, I guess, that era. So we're going to talk about creating some of these here in After Effects, and then, then in our future tutorials, we're going to do some more advanced stuff. But for this one, let's go ahead and get started. So I already have a comp, I already have a background here. It's kind of spacey. You know, I, you know, I'm kind of basing this off of a like a Photoshop tutorial that I recently saw. So I'm kind of trying to steal some of those elements, but to recreate them here in After Effects. So one thing I really liked was this uh, space sort of background. So this image has a lot of contrast, and I really don't want to have that. So what I want to do is go to Effect, Color Correction, Curves. Now you might not have to do this, but depending on what image you're using, you might have to. So what I'm going to do is under RGB is take the top point here and lower that and the bottom point down here and kind of raise that up. And as you see, this will kind of curve everything out and make it a little bit more flat. So the first thing we're going to do is go up to the text title tool and I'm, I'm using the font pack font. Um, but what you should do on your own time, go to Google and search up some 80s font styles. There's a ton out there and a lot of great options. But for this tutorial, I'm going to use the pack font and we're going to go in here and we're going to type in some sort of text. I'm just going to use uh, throwback. You know, even though I think I'm posting this video on a Wednesday, so it's not really throwback Thursday yet, but maybe it's a throwback Wednesday, you know, be different. So let's go ahead and center the anchor point up. And let's go to the align tab and let's go ahead and center this up as well. Maybe we'll make the font a little bit smaller, maybe like that. And then once we have our font in here, let's go up to effect perspective and we'll use the drop shadow effect. And what we'll do is go to the, you know, make sure the soft is set at zero. Let's go ahead and increase the distance by a little bit right now. And let's go to the drop shadow color and let's set this to like maybe purple or something, you know, purple and I guess uh, a light blue seems to be the style. And let's just set the uh, opacity to 100%. And maybe we'll bring the distance a little bit closer. Uh, if we want, we maybe we can change the directions by a little bit. But it's really just create like this uh, extra layer of text underneath this. So it'll look pretty cool. Maybe we'll make this just a little bit bigger as well. Okay. And then let's go up to Effect Stylize Glow. And I'm not going to change anything, but this looks really cool. Kind of has that nice little neon glow feel to it. And then once this is all done, let's go to the uh, Polygon tool. Make sure nothing is selected here. You know, maybe you need to lock your background, but let's go in here. Let's bring up the title safes and let's kind of have this, you know, create right in the center. I'll hold down Command and Shift or Control and Shift on a PC, and we'll just draw draw out a perfect sort of polygon like this. And let's go into Polystar One, Polystar Path, and let's set the number of points to three to create a triangle. And let's go to the stroke, and maybe we'll set the stroke down to five. All right, and let's go and maybe. Uh, go to the transform here. Maybe we'll make this a little bit bigger by, by increasing the scale. And maybe we'll go here and center this up as well. Kind of like so. And let's go and set the stroke color to uh, purple. And then let's go and go to the Polystar 1 here. And let's hit Command D on our keyboard to duplicate it or Control D on a PC. And let's go back into the transform here. And let's scale this out to make this a little bit larger than our inner triangle. And then let's go back to the stroke over here and then maybe set this one to like, I guess, a scion sort of color, if that's how you say it, scion. And let's go and drag that underneath our text. And then finally, let's go up to effect, stylize, glow. And then let's go back into here and let's go to add and let's add a trim paths effect. And let's open that up. Let's, add the, let's click the stopwatch to add a keyframe and let's set the start to 100%. And let's go to say like maybe five seconds here and let's set the start to 0%. So now this will kind of animate on kind of like that. You know, I think it's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and maybe go up to layer new camera and well, I'll just use a 50 millimeter preset and yep. And let's go ahead and make these two layers 3D layers. And then let's go to hit P on our keyboard to bring up position. Let's add a keyframe to there at five seconds. And let's go back to the beginning here and let's go ahead and grab the track Z camera tool, which is at the top here. And let's basically just, you know, bring this all the way in. Maybe we'll start off like right here. And then as you see, we've scrubbed through here. We will come right, the text will come, kind of come right at us and it'll create some sort of awesome animation. Let's, then let's go to the throwback text here. Let's hit P on our keyboard and let's set the uh, Z position out a little bit, maybe like to negative 400. And that'll kind of just create some nice little depth between um, the text and the triangle. 
sort of some separation. And then of course, let's make sure to make the last keyframe here an easy as keyframe by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And of course for the trim paths, let's make the last keyframe a easy as keyframe as well. So it'll kind of smooth out towards the end of our animation. So let's go ahead and select all the layers in this uh, composition here. Let's go up to layer, pre-compose, and we'll maybe call this one tut, you know, 80s uh, grain or something. I don't know. And it doesn't matter what you call it. But then let's go up to effect, color correction, and let's grab the brightness and contrast uh, filter here. And let's set the contrast down to like maybe negative 100. And then let's go to effect, noise, and grain. And let's go ahead and add the grain here. And we'll set this to final output. And this will kind of add some of that old, you know, video artifact to this image here. And maybe we'll set the size to maybe 1.5, the softness maybe to 0.5. Um, and, you know, the, all that looked pretty good to me. So now we have some grain in here. I hope you can see this on YouTube, but there's some nice uh, film grain in here or video grain maybe, if you will. And that looks really awesome. So now we have this entire animation in here. And uh, we are basically done here, but I wanted to go ahead and add... Uh, some optical flares in here to kind of add some, you know, glowing, you know, effects in here. Um, but I saved this to the end of the tutorial just in case for those of you who don't have this plugin. Optical flares is a third-party plugin, so if you didn't, if you don't have it, then you have to pick it up from videocopilot.net. But let's go ahead and create a new solid. Let's call this one flare, and let's go to effect, video copilot, optical flares. And let's go to options and let's go ahead and clear all and let's add the glow effect in here and let's set the global color to like, you know, maybe our purple, kind of get close in there. Maybe that's good. It's more of a pink, but I'm okay with that. And we'll click OK. And let's go and toggle switch to the modes and let's set the transfer mode to add. And we'll maybe zoom out here and let's set the brightness down to like 40. And now we maybe we can start placing these in, you know, at random spots in here. Maybe we can uh, go to the flicker parameter here and set the speed to like maybe four or six, something like that. And we'll set the amount to 20. So now this will flicker throughout the entire animation. And let's go and duplicate this layer. And let's just find random spots for this, uh, you know, little lens flare. Maybe we'll set the brightness down to 20. And then let's go and duplicate the flare again. Bring this one to the top. And let's go into the options here. And let's change the global color to back to, I guess, a scion sort of light blue. I hope I'm saying it correctly, but let's go and click OK. And let's just go find a nice little spot for our uh, light blue lens flare here, or should I say a nice little glow. And let's set the brightness maybe down to 20. And let's go ahead and duplicate it again, or duplicate the blue flare. And let's just go ahead and find another nice place for it. Maybe we'll set this one down back up to 40. And let's go find maybe just one more spot. And I swear we'll be done with uh, the background flares here and set that to 20. And then the last thing I want to take a look at is setting flares on the three points on this blue triangle here and make them, you know, react in 3D space. So what we're going to do is duplicate another blue flare here and let's go ahead and grab the XY position crosshair and let's drag it to the top here. And maybe we should keep this at 40, maybe. Yeah, I think I'm good with 40. And then let's go to the source type and set this to 3D. So now this will track automatically in 3D space, so we don't have to do any sort of cool animation. So these background flares will already be on the background, but these foreground flares will animate with our text and triangles. But let's go and duplicate this flare and set this to this corner right here. And do it one more time, duplicate that, and set it to this corner here. And make sure you're set at 5 seconds or at the end of your camera animation, so you don't have to worry about any miscues. But let's go ahead and go back here, and as you can see the flares... Uh, animate with our triangle, but the background flares do not because they are set in 2D, spe 2D space while these are set in 3D space. So uh, if we go back to our uh, tut over here. As you can see, this is really glowing. It has that very nice, uh, you know, thin contrast. Um, and, you know, this looks really awesome. Maybe the noise and grain might be too much. We might want to uh, lower the intensity to maybe 0.5 to kind of, you know, take that down by a little bit for, for the most part. You know, I think that kind of has that, you know, video, uh, you know, I guess motion graphic feel. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please drop a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel for more After Effects tutorials. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I hope you have a good day.